This is building your own home PC. First we need to gather all the parts together and get them all together organized so we know what we need. You're going to need a computer's power source. For your power source it's called a power supply and you need to make sure you have the correct connections to fit your motherboard and your graphics card and all the components you're going to put into your computer. You're going to need a hard drive. This one we have a solid state hard drive. It connects through SATA. We have a graphics card. This is what puts the image onto the screen and helps run um, video games a little bit better. It connects PCIe and it also needs additional power which comes from the power supply. We have an 8 gig memory stick. The stick is DDR3 1600 megahertz and it goes into it fits into our motherboard here's our motherboard we have a AMD mother, uh, AMD processor a motherboard with SLI configuration for uh, expansion if you wanted it's got four memory slots and we've are the processor and heatsink are already pre-installed so we're not going to have to mess with that at all the SATA ports are located here. The power is here. Also, we have to connect to the buttons to turn it on. In the case, we'll connect about right here. And then we have our computer case. This is what's going to hold all the components together. And finally, we're going to need tools. We got a couple screwdrivers, screws, and cable ties things to keep our stuff neat. First remove the side case. The thumb screws can be undone and then the case can be removed. Insert the motherboard and line up the holes for the screws. On the inside of the case, there are risers. They stick up off the bottom of the case just a little bit. That's to keep the motherboard from touching the metal and grounding out. Some cases come with these pre-installed and others you have to put them in yourself. These are already pre-installed. Start with the corner screws. and then fill in around the edges. Not every screw hole has to be used. Mainly the corners to keep the board down. Next we're going to plug in the switches that turn on the computer to the motherboard. We have the power switch, power LED, uh, reset switch, and HDD LED. The LED ones just make the front of the computer blink whenever the computer's thinking and things like that. So first we're going to insert the power switch. You just push the pins into the correct spot. It's written on the board. If you can't find the correct place you can always consult the manual it'll help you find them all of these are going to plug in pretty much in the same general area 
And then, then we're going to install the speaker. The speaker also happens to plug in right next to this. We also have the audio which plugs in on this other corner. And finally, the USBs on the front of the computer plug in here. All of these things can be found written on the board. After you've inserted your cards, you're going to want to make sure you get your wires bundled up. If you don't bundle the wires together, they can get into the fans and cause loud noises. So just get them all wrapped together or, and then take a zip tie and stick the zip tie on them. This will keep the cords out of your way and it will also make for a nice looking build after you're done. Makes it things easier to, to work with and handle. And also we're going to insert our USB 3 into the expansion card we just installed. And that will make the USB 3's on the front work. We're going to install the memory and a USB 3 card into this computer. The USB 3 card has an adapter so the front of the computer's USB 3 port will also be activated. The motherboard does not have a USB 3 capabilities so we have an expansion card we're going to install to make it work. First we're going to install the memory. You'll notice the memory has it is slotted. One side has more pins and one side has less pins. So you need to look at that and whenever you go to insert it into the uh, memory slot, make sure you flip the mother the memory the correct direction. Insert the memory one side first and then the next side so you you slide one side down and then you it, you wait till it gets pushed in and then you do the other side so it's kinda like a seesaw motion you push one and then you get the other and whenever you get it correct it'll click in and this little guy will hit will hold it down and you won't be able to just pull it straight out likewise with the expansion card you're going to knock out where it needs to go with just a screwdriver and just wiggle it back and forth till it breaks off and then you insert the card into the correct location and push it straight down sometimes you have to get the the bottom piece lined up correctly there we go and then insert a screw to hold it in place Now we're going to insert the hard drive. We have the solid state drive. I had to put a uh, add-on on it, this metal bracket, so it can fit inside of the case. We're going to insert it so the ports are facing towards the motherboard so we can make sure the cords will be able to reach. Line up the holes and insert your screws and tighten them down Now we're going to connect the hard drive to the motherboard. We have a SATA cable here. Plugs into the back of the hard drive and then plugs into the motherboard into SATA slot number one. Just going to move the cables out of the way a little bit. 
All right, after we do that, we're going to need to install our power supply. This goes in at the bottom. Some cases have the power supply at the top. This particular one has it at the bottom. The screws go in the back side. Now we're going to install the power. There are several power spots on the motherboard. There's two for the uh, main power. Um, this one is, the top one is an eight pin. So we're going to install the two four pins. They just click in. You can't really plug them in the wrong direction because they're shaped so they can't be plugged in the wrong spot. Our um, USB cable that or our USB expansion card we installed needs a power, so we're going to insert the Molex into its spot. Sometimes the Molex ones don't like to twist, push in all the way, so you gotta push them kind of hard. Then we're going to the uh, install the SATA power to the hard drive. It's shaped like an L. You can't really plug it in backwards either. And then finally we're going to plug in the main power to the board. It's a 24 pin. This one is also you can't plug it in wrong either because you won't fit in incorrectly. For the final installation, we're going to put in the graphics card. Just because of how it's shaped and how much space we have, we're going to plug in the power to it first. There's two six pins that go into the back of this graphics card. And then we're going to insert it into our PCIe Express slot. We're choosing the bottom one just to save us a little bit more space. We're kind of crammed. This is going to just fit perfectly straight down, slide into place, and then we will insert a screw and be done. This has been a tutorial on how to build your own basic computer. The last thing you have to do is put the case back on and put the screws back in. Generally you want to test the computer before you're done, but we've already tested it, so everything's working.